If you're part of a community, you'll know how important it is to bring everybody together. Yes, a place to share ideas, information on upcoming events, or just a place to say hello. Maybe you run a local sports team, an esports league, or maybe a local interest group. Well, you're going to need a place to be able to also share your ideas and bring these people together. And now that Microsoft Teams allows that, it's certainly one option you can consider. Because the new capability in Microsoft Teams allows you to build communities that align to your own specific interest groups. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you and explaining this new capability in Microsoft Teams and showing you how you can create your new first community and bring all of your community members together in one single place. And of course, if this video helps, hit that like button to let me know. Or even better, hit the subscribe button so you can learn to use these tools that you already have today in much better ways. But before we dive in and check out creating our community, let's also explain a little bit around the background of how Teams Communities works. So what's the deal with Teams Communities? Well, last year, Microsoft announced it was going to bring communities into Teams. And as part of that, it would move into one single app. Yes, there'll be no more Microsoft Teams personal app and a separate app for your work or school account. They would converge into one single app, aptly known as Microsoft Teams. And that day has now arrived. That means that when you sign into Teams using your work or school account, you can easily add your personal account into Teams. You can even have it running side by side. With this new capability, it also opened the door to creating communities. Because Microsoft Teams for many years has been able to create the idea of project workspaces, but they were never really designed as community areas. You could add in third party guests, but there'd be a cost somewhere for a Microsoft 365 business license. And well, that's all changed. Using your personal account in Teams does not attract any licensing costs. You can create a community free of charge and the members you invite will also be able to use it for free of charge. But there is a limitation. A Microsoft Work or School account cannot create a community and nor can be a member of that community. Yes, this is only available to personal accounts. We can think of those as like Outlook accounts, Hotmail, Gmail or other free accounts that you'll find on the wider web. But what on earth does it deliver? Well, it delivers a space that you can actually call home. Give it a name of your choice. You can share ideas, files. You can even use Microsoft AI to create custom images and create events that your community know that you've got upcoming. You can get away from that idea of having a single group in WhatsApp, and you can also spread your information over several channels, making it really easy to use. And that's the thing. By using Microsoft capabilities that we've seen in Teams, it can make communities really easier to manage. So how about I go and show you how to create your first community? We'll check out creating a community for a local sports team and see how easy it is to get started, share ideas and more. Let's dive in. So let's get started with creating our first Teams community. And it's pretty easy because now Teams communities are integrated into the single Microsoft Teams app that you've probably be using for work or school accounts. In fact, I'm signed in right now in Teams in a work account. What you're seeing is me signed in to accessing all of my existing work teams. But also you can now add in your personal account to Teams to get started with communities. To do that, click on your name in the top right and you'll see that I'm already signed into my Outlook account. And all you need to do is get to sign into your personal account is click on add another account and type in your email address when prompted for any of your Microsoft accounts. Then when you select your personal account, you'll then be taken into your Teams personal app, the list of all of your existing communities that you're currently a member of. And here we can go and create our first Teams community to get started with a local football team. I'm already a member of multiple communities for that particular area, but I have a third team that I'm managing I need to get a community created for to share with the team and the parents. Let's go ahead and select the plus button at the top of the community section. And now we can choose to create a brand new blank community. I use a template that's provided by Microsoft. And guess what? Sports is right up our avenue for our local football team. And we need to go and create a community for. We can now give it a community name and also a description to get started. 
With our community name now set and a description to let people know what it relates to, we can now choose to edit the community guidelines. I'm gonna go ahead and use Microsoft's own guidelines, but you can click on the pencil icon and you can write your own if you have those available as well. Now we also need to consider whether you need approval to join this community. Now for this actual club, that may be appropriate. So I'm gonna go and turn that on. But if you have an open community that you don't want that restriction, of course you can turn it off. And also you'll see an option to make this community public. This is much like Facebook groups, allowing them to be visible inside of the Teams community app that people can search for and see from all across the world. Well, once again, for my community, that may not be appropriate. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this turned off. With that now done, we can select create. We'll go ahead and create our brand new community. So let's get our community all ready to go before I invite anyone into here. The first thing you may want to do is create a very nice welcome message. Let's go ahead and select that button, add the relevant banner image and the information you'd like to include in your welcome message. With our message now added, go ahead and click on save and we'll see how that works a little later. We also want to put an announcement in our community to share what we're all about. Let's go ahead and select announcement from the top, give it a headline and also some text content into the message box as well. With that done, let's consider adding an image to our announcement. And I really don't like this blue color. We want to see a little bit more personal for our community, maybe even unique. Well, that can be done now using the Microsoft Designer icon. Left click and you'll see it creates a prompt for an announcement background with a headline, Welcome to Midland Villa FC Community. Beneath that, Microsoft Designer powered by AI has now created a range of unique images that we can use inside of our community. Let's go ahead and use this one here and select done. We now see we have a personalized image and also we have our content. Go ahead, click on post. Now anyone that joins Midland Villa FC on our main page here, they'll get this announcement that they can then also go and reply to and also react to more. A simple way to create an announcement in your community to keep everyone engaged. But what about your different channels? Think of channels like different ways to communicate. In Midland Villa FC, we've got coaching sessions and upcoming matches. What I'd like to do is have a dedicated space for those. We can use channels to do exactly that. Click on add channel under Midland Villa FC or your community name and give it an emoji from the, within this dialog. Let's use the football icon and then we can also define these as coaching sessions. Here, we're gonna have all of our chat and posts relating to all the coaching sessions going on at Midland Villa FC. And all we then need to do is go and start a new post. Once again, we can choose an announcement, but you may just wanna do this as a normal post, just like you would on other apps like Facebook or even Teams itself. Let's left click the announcement icon and change it back to a post. You can then add your content in readiness to share your post. With our content now added, we can go ahead and click on post, but there might be additional information that you'd like to include in a Word document. Can you also attach this to one of your posts? You absolutely can. You can go down and click on the attach button to attach cloud files from in your OneDrive, or you can select it from your local computer. If you upload from your computer, they will be also uploaded into your personal OneDrive account. Here we have a range of different documents I've now got available. If I select this document here and select attach, as you can see, it'll attach it to this post. Anyone with the link can also edit this Word document. Select post, this is now available in our coaching sessions, allowing the wider community to engage with it and even access that document right in place. So creating a post in any of your channels and sharing files is totally possible. You can use to personalize your community. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial on communities. And very quickly, just to let you know that if you need help in Microsoft 365, why not check out the web link below, where you can find on-demand learning courses and more to help you on your journey in Microsoft 365. Not forgetting, you can even download a free ebook from the same site. Anyway, let's dive back into Teams Communities and find out what else there is that's new. But what about events? In Midland FC, we also have upcoming games against other clubs. We can also create events. We wouldn't want those that are again appearing in our coaching sessions, so how about we add another channel? This time, once again, we could use a different emoji, or the same, and we'll put it as upcoming football games. 
With that now done, click on add. We can create our brand new channel. This time, however, I may not want to create it using a post. Instead, I can go to the event section in the top right and I can create a new event. Using the create event button on the right hand side or in the middle, we can go ahead and add details for the event itself. Yes, it doesn't even need to be a Teams meeting online. You can turn the online event off. You could also add the location to the relevant training ground and add more details including the title, the dates, timings and more inside of the details for this event. When you're done, just click on send and that will now be shared with your community who can join the event and have it in a calendar they can easily have access to as well. But we are missing the most crucial part of any community, people. Yes, I'm the only one in our community. That's not going to really lead to anything useful to our community itself. So let's go ahead and add others in. You've got a couple of choices here. You can firstly go and click on the plus with the people icon to invite members into your community. And here, unlike the commercial version of Teams, you can also invite them using mobile phone numbers as well as email addresses as well. Now we could go here and add in someone's email address. For example, I've got another coach I work with. Let's go ahead and add his email address in so he has access to this community as well. With the email address set, we'll go ahead and left click and we'll invite in Joe Bloggs, who's the other football coach. He'll now be invited via an email and he can access this community by following the link. But also, how does it work with sharing it with others outside of that invitation process? You may want to put a link into another one of the ways that you distribute your comms, maybe a WhatsApp group or other element. Well, all we need to do is click into share join link and you'll see the link here. You copy and paste it into any app of your choice. But it's something really to be mindful of. Click on edit link settings and you can also ensure you can allow members that wouldn't be allowed to share a link to this community. So very much if you don't want members to invite others and have access to this sharing link, you can turn that off and create a new link. When you've done that, that link will now be only available for them, you to share. Members cannot invite others into this community as well. But that's a very handy way to share access straight to your community without having to invite everybody by email. And you may be wondering, what happened to Joe Bloggs, the football coach I invited by email? Well, here you go. He received an email directly from Microsoft Teams Communities, allowing him to see the details of the community and select the button to join the community itself. And when Joe Bloggs follows that link, as we can see, he can also customize how he appears on Teams. I'll leave it all as it is here with Joe Bloggs as the first and last name. He then has access to the wider Midland Villa community. Let's go ahead and click accept so we can gain access to it. And as soon as you access it, here you'll see, you can see the announcement we created. He's also received a chat message immediately via community bot. And guess what? That's our welcome message that we shared earlier when we created our initial community for Midland Villa FC. So you can see that your personalized welcome message is also sent as a chat message, as well as providing access for the community, the coaching sessions with that additional information, including the Word documents being shared. And of course, Joe Bloggs can go ahead and reply in line or even give a thumbs up to any of these posts. And that'll be all possible inside of the new communities app inside of Teams. So there you have it, a new place to build your community from. You can now decide if it's the right place to bring your community into. And if it is, well, you can get started today completely free of charge. Yes, Teams Communities is available today in the same app that you already know, Microsoft Teams. Now, if you'd like this video, I'd love it if you hit that like button. And also let me know in the comments if you'd like to find out more on Teams Communities because there's a whole range of different capabilities we can explore if you'd like to find out more. Just let me know in the comments if you want me to do that and I'll try and get another video out soon. Otherwise, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button to find more great content like this to help you use the tools you already have in much better ways. Other than that, well, I'll be seeing you in the next one.